Hello everybody, welcome back to A Message of Hope. My name is Monet and I'm so happy that you're joining with us today. Today I am joined with Chatty and George, two brothers who have beautiful faith journeys to share with you. We're going to be discussing the topic of happiness and how oftentimes we're searching for happiness in a secular culture. But to begin, we're going to have George start us off in a prayer. Thank you. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for gathering us here today and giving us an opportunity to share our message with One and all her listeners. Really appreciate uh, this opportunity. And we ask for your guidance in leading this conversation and really showing us during this time of Advent how we can uh, share the Catholic message and give hope to others. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you both for being on. I'm so excited and for our viewers to hear a little bit of both of your testimonies. So again, the topic is on happiness and how the world tells us this is where your happiness can be found, but then the faith, God, Jesus tells us something different. So would you two like to share a little bit of your testimony, kind of what your faith life has looked like over the years? Yeah, so um, I started off uh, a long time ago living a Catholic life, but it was one foot in and one foot out. Um, I'd still go to church every Sunday, but I'd still be going partying and over drinking. I'd get drunk a lot. Um, I'd have like sex before marriage, which is not good. A lot of like sinful roads that we take because the, growing up, the world that we live in, they normalize all the negative things. Um, and they don't really normalize the word of God. So I feel like by doing this, we kind of go away from this life and everybody loses their track of faith. So, but the way I came back to it, um, through a lot of prayers and you ask God to help you get over these temptations of the world and he'll really open up your mind and your heart to these things. Uh, the way you think and the way you start to do things, you'll start It'll show you all the, the right ways. Um, and the way I got past all that is through the rosary. The rosary helped me get through a lot. Um, and just praying, hanging out with the right people, uh, people closer to the faith will get you closer. Uh, and that's pretty much it. But I'm glad I'm back on the road, so. Yes, that's beautiful. And thank you. And even to recognize, like, okay, this is what happened in the past and not to beat ourselves up over it because thank God for confession, for the sacrament of confession. Thank God for the opportunity for God to welcome us back with open arms like the prodigal son, like come it's back my me. son. Like, you know, all three of us have had our ups and downs with the faith journey. We may have stepped off the path to holiness, but each time we've come back, the Lord's like, welcome back. Like, it's, I see what you've done, I've seen the sin, but I still love you, my son, my daughter, and what a beautiful testament, and especially with Our Lady, seeing all the beautiful ways that she helped guide you back. So that's beautiful. Thank you, Thank you Chatty. And George, if you don't mind sharing your faith journey as well, that'd be beautiful. Sure, yeah, and just like Chatty said, um, we were obviously raised in a Catholic family, but by no means did we live that truly Catholic life. We always had one foot in, one foot out, and uh, I think our path ultimately showed us that that wasn't really the way, you know. I always felt like growing up that no matter what you did bad, you could outweigh with good. But it's not really the case because these temporary sins and temptations, they're really just a temporary happiness. We don't always feel that happy unless we're doing those actions and committing those sins again. So by uh, finding your way with God, we are able to realize that really the graces are an eternal happiness. It's no longer something that's temporary. Like if I'm drinking, partying, and I'm happy doing that, I'm going to have to do it again to feel that same happiness. But once you have the grace of God, uh, you're really exposed to an eternal happiness where you always feel this good, you know? And that's what really brought us back to our faith. And we realized that we're producing more good, not just within ourselves, but we're affecting the people around us. We can see our family relationships get better, our friendships get better, and we are making a much more positive impact in, to the world. So that's what really brought us back. That's beautiful. Thank you both. And even, again, my story is very, very similar. Uh, we fall into the lie, like I was saying before, that society puts out for us of 
this is what happiness looks like, tied with the pretty little bow, and we just reach for it because it looks attractive at first glance, and then we fall into, you know, one drink turns into two drinks, and then all of a sudden we're on a routine of every weekend partying. And then it's like, hmm, when does that happiness kick in? You know, it's momentary, like you were saying, George, and uh, then it's just all of a sudden, like you were saying, Chatty, with your community, Everyone around you seems to be doing the same thing. The party culture seems to become normalized. And then before we know it, that's just what we do on a regular basis, but it's so empty. And maybe those of you watching right now, you feel that same emptiness. And I wanna let you know, that's what society has promised you, this happiness. But once you start getting yourself away from those sinful actions, that the true happiness is found in the faith. So, Chatty, you were talking about you know the rosary and community. That's what really helped you get on the right track. Is there anything else that either of you would like to share of concrete tools that our viewers at home can start taking to really seek after happiness, which is Christ himself? Yeah, I encourage everybody listening to, to really find their relationship with Jesus. Uh, I know everybody's uh, faith is a little bit different, you know? So just like we all have relationships with our parents, friends, each of those are very interpersonal and so should your relationship be with Jesus. Um, I think once people realize that you shouldn't really be following what others are doing and uh, really lean on yourself and on your own faith to, to find that bond and figure out what works for you and what will ultimately help you live a better and more meaningful life. Yes, and even a feeling of shame can oftentimes come over us and if you are so far off the path to holiness, we may feel shameful of, I can't ever go back into a church, like this is so bad, like the Lord will never welcome me back again. And um, then we forget that we have the beautiful sacrament of confession where the Lord welcomes us back with open arms and it's like, thank God, like I'm just so happy that yeah. you're here. Like I don't want you to beat yourself up over these sins. Like as long as you've confessed them, like we will start on a clean slate again and again, no matter how many times it takes until you're on the straight and narrow path with me forever. So even for us, like may we continue to give hope to all those that we encounter of, yeah, like I've fallen off the path of holiness, but the Lord welcomes me back through confession and through forgiving me for these sins. And do either of you have anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers before we begin to conclude? Yeah, for sure. Um... I feel like no matter how many sins we've committed and how bad they are, that Jesus, he's so loving and he'll, he'll forgive us as long as we open up to him and we accept that he's our Lord and Savior. And I feel like he's always knocking on the door. So for the people listening, if you feel like he's not coming to you, he's always knocking on the door. So if you just open the door for him, he's going to grab you. So you have to give it a try. That's the only way. If, if you give him 50%, he's going to give you 50%. You have to give him everything. You have to sacrifice your life for him. And that's when he's going to show you true happiness. And we both experienced that. And it's real. Um, we went from a sinful life. And now we're working closer to get to him. So I encourage everybody to open up their hearts and their minds. And try to build a strong relationship with uh, our God. Because he will show you, like he will show you true happiness, and he will take you places you'll never even uh, imagine. So, thank you. I can't even end it better than that myself. But thank you both so much for joining. Again, I pray to God that we are a witness that you can come back to the faith no matter what your past has looked like. So do not lose hope. Turn to the sacraments and. You know, reach out to the hand of God that is so willingly waiting to grab hold of yours. So God bless you, boys. Thanks Thank again. You, Thank you. And we'll see you next week.